Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Adobe Live. I'm your host, Fabio Lalera. Today on the stream, we're joined by the husband and wife art duo, Matt and Roxy Ortiz of Wooden Wave Art. Are you too excited to be sharing your process with us today? Hi, thanks for having us. Yes, hello, we everyone. are super excited. Yep. Yes. Um, so they're going to be showing us their process as they create an ocean inspired piece as a part of the hashtag create waves campaign using creativity to help raise awareness about the impacts of climate change on our ocean and planet. Now, before we get into it, you guys, if you missed the previous stream, don't worry, you can view the replay on Behance or YouTube. Plus, check out the illustrator Ava Radamonti as she creates surreal drawings in Adobe Fresco and Photoshop. And don't miss the illustrator creative challenges with Andrew Hockerdell every weekday at 1130 a.m. Pacific right before the stream. Tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. And don't forget, you can always replay our live streams even when we're offline. So bookmark this page so you can come back to it whenever you need a little refresh. And now if you're tuning in from YouTube or Behance, remember to drop your questions for all of us in the chat. We're going to be answering them. So don't be shy. Join us in the chat. Um, Matt and Roxy, let me see who we have in the chat today. We have Robert, we have Cody, we have Jack. There's so many people waiting for you to create your artwork. So why don't you start this off? Give us a little introduction as to, as to who you guys are and then tell us what we're getting up to today. All right. Yay, thanks. Um, welcome. So we are a husband and wife creative team and we have been working together for almost 15 years now. So it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, ups and downs and learning in our creative journey. Um, but we do a lot of work that's inspired by nature in general. We're both surfers. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the ways that we met was in art school as we would go surfing together after class. Um, so Matt's bringing nice. up some <laughs> of our art here. Um, but yeah, one of the things that we stumbled <laughs> upon is doing um, sustainable tree houses, like illustrations of them. So that was Something I love it. Kind of I fun. love it. I was seeing all of these on your page and I have so many questions about them for later, but okay. I love these. Yeah. Thank thanks. Yeah. We've got a, quite a few ocean inspired things that you can check out on the V hands. Yeah. As well. That's our, that's our little uh, slideshow of stuff there, but we're super excited to dive into this uh, day's post or this day's uh, live stream. We'll be doing a whale shark image and we love whale sharks. Yes. So show fun. us. Yes. Show us. Okay. So this is what we're working on today, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And right. tell us what app you're using here. Give us a little, orient us a little bit. All right. Well, we are in Fresco and usually the two of us will work a little combination of, you know, pen and paper, scanning, Photoshop, and uh, the iPad is so useful in terms of being able to take it wherever we go and we, we can work on the road or in different places. So Fresco is great for that. Definitely. Um, I have to agree yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah. We're kind of like analog and digital i think yeah. everything kind of comes into play um i think I, like a lot of people we have a sketchbook that we put little ideas or little notes uh -huh. in you know mm -hmm. and then when we have time then we can bring it into the ipad and really start developing it out yep so exciting i can't wait to see this whole process go down because you guys create such intricate pieces and i'm just like how is this all happening i feel like there's so many little details that I feel like are easy to get lost in. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like so excited to see how you're like managing all of this. Um, so what do we have here on the screen? We got a lot of whale sharks going on. Um, yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit more about this. All right. Well, um, doing research and storytelling is a big part of a lot of the work that we do. Um, so when we were looking into this idea of the Create Waves campaign with mm -hmm. the Ocean Agency and what they're about, we realized that the Ocean Agency is actually the um, organization that produced um, Chasing Coral, which is a really awesome documentary. Yeah. We actually saw it 
years and years ago when it first came out and they were on their documentary tour. Mm -hmm. um, nice. And it was one of those films that you're just like, everybody needs to see this, you know, um, you know, how can we help spread more information awareness. about climate change and awareness and this is so important so we were really excited to see that documentary take off um and so it was really cool to see that they were the ones yeah. partnering for this project as well um but going back to the storytelling idea when we were looking into things and just diving into different endangered um sea creatures that were out there yeah. one of them is the whale shark mm -hmm. um and then diving into the whale shark such a gorgeous animal. It's beautiful. And it's, yes. it's patterning and everything like that. But also it's just a really amazing uh, wonder of like scientific achievement for, for, <laughs> for animals. I was actually just learning about them the other night and they actually have like a really amazing ability to regrow partially like severed fins. And that's something that's unique to the, to all sharks. Are, oh my gosh, in, that's in like kind of lizardish, right? Yeah, exactly. Lizards grow. Ooh, yeah, yeah it's creepy, kind of but a, I like it. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting animal for yeah. sure. Like lizards can regrow their tails. Like, right, but it's the yeah. only shark that can do that. I kind of misspoke. It's the only one that can do that. That's oh, so cool. neat. Is it, is this a shark that if you encountered it in the wild, you would be terrified or is it passive? What's the deal? Uh, Good question. It's a gentle giant. Very gentle. Okay. Yeah. They're uh, right, right, right. filter feeders, so they eat krill and prank plankton and tiny little fish. Yeah. Okay. So, so humans are are safe from <laughs> yeah. not, not on the after menu. Us. Yeah. No, okay. The menu. <laughs> Wonderful. Good to know for everyone in the chat here. We don't have to be scared yeah. th throughout the stream. These are right. safe right. for us. So, tell me about how this is coming into play for today's piece. All right. Yeah, maybe you want to start sure. getting, working on it. Um, yep. Well, one of the things that we um, looked at, you know, we were attracted to the whale shark because it's just such a fun looking creature and design wise, it mm -hmm. has cool patterning. Cool patterns, um, yeah. But we kind of geek out on random things. And one of them was that we saw an article talking about how the same, um, or there was a software or technology that was developed to track the coordinates of stars mm -hmm. and you know it's, it's like from, an algorithm it was with the hubble space telescope so their mm -hmm. oh, their cool. program for identifying star groups right it's pretty cool um so but they were able to find an alternate use for that same technology applied to whale sharks in that their patterning on their back is like a constellation of yeah, stars so check this out Ooh, yeah. okay so each, each pattern of those is unique to each yeah. shark yeah exactly. it's like a thumbprint <laughs> Yeah. Right. Beautiful. I love it. That's so like romantic too, right? It's like it each one was unique. And even though yep. in our heads, like every whale shark's the same, I love that we're giving them each their own yeah. life story. Right. <laughs> and it's really important to conservation because they track individuals mm -hmm. to see their migration patterns and totally. you know, how they age and if there's any dangers to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of what like we're that. thinking with this one is, uh, and we were a little bit inspired by say Escher and the way he melds patterns together and there's a transition yes. of dark to light um what you can see here is i've got a thumbnail layer that's pretty um light and i've i've kind of just thrown that on there to sort of act as a guide yeah. what you can see is these sharks are moving upward into the kind of the night sky that's up here and they're moving through kind of like a white space but transitioning into that black space where the stars are and the melding of the star patterns in the stars and the stars on the or the dots on the the whale sharks are and we're still I, you know we're working it out but we'll figure out how how that all comes into play as we as we move along in this piece yeah i definitely see the vision i also see the metaphor is it i don't <laughs> know if it's technically a metaphor yeah like yeah. It's a i think it's why not <laughs> yeah i think it's uh technically we are talking about a metaphor and i love how this is coming together i totally get the mc Estra vibes coming mm -hmm. from it i can see the whales clearly i can see the night sky clearly and i feel like you have a really good thumbnail here already created yeah. like i can already see how this is going to turn out especially given that i've seen some of your other work i know like i can mm -hmm. envision this coming to life and i'm really excited to see it all come together yeah. Now, can you tell me a little bit about kind of what the layout that you have here in this fresco is? Like, how big is the hmm. page? I feel like some people are really nerdy. They want to oh. know, like, exactly how big sure. are we working here? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just those I, little nitty gritty details. All right. Well, the nitty gritty is not too um, complex. It's really, a, it's, I, I like to work kind of on larger 
paper spaces to give myself room and, and ourselves room in case we want to turn it into a print. Right. So I believe my paper space is 18 by 24 and that's inches. And then um, just set it at 300 DPI. So give myself that wiggle room. And as you can tell, the image itself is a bit smaller, the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's so that I can kind of not feel uh, restrained by like, say the borders of this piece. If I want to, I want to be able to draw through those borders, that rectangular border and, and really create a, a realistic flow of shape. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what I'm doing is giving myself room. And then I'm setting up the, the page space, the, out, the layout to kind of have all my reference photos on the outside. Uh, and that's this kind of a so nice handy. feature. I, yeah. I love how you're setting this up. I feel like <laughs> a lot of the times I see people often working kind of in the full size that they're going to work mm. at just because yeah. you're like, you know, sometimes depending on your iPad, your iPad can make it feel smaller. So you just want to uh, full screen it. Right. Um, but I love what you're doing here, kind of giving yourself some margin. And I yeah. think it specifically for that flow that I feel like sometimes we underestimate and we think like, oh, I got it. Like, it's fine. I, I I can figure it out. But then actually having that margin is going to look way more natural when you're trying to like crop in. I think that's so smart. Okay. <laughs> it's really cool. I haven't seen that. It's not something I see oh. often. Um, oh. Usually I feel like people work at, at mm -hmm. the dimension, you know, right. and yeah. just like kind of hope that the, the way they're moving <laughs> their hand is, you know, making yeah, yeah, sense. Yeah, so good. I think that's super cool. And I love these reference images just like right in around it. I feel like it keeps you sharp, right? You don't like start yeah. inventing your own movement that, you know, you <laughs> kind of just like impose on it. Um, right. You have so many reference images here. Tell me mm -hmm. why you have so many as opposed to just like one big whale shark. Right. That's a good question. Um, and, and to touch on that last question, that point as well, I think our, our background as drawing on paper mm -hmm. has really allowed us to feel like, oh, just give yourself more room. And yeah. then in terms of, you know, including all these other reference images um, for this first uh, two hours, what I want to really focus on is the uh, anatomy of the whale shark because it is such a unique and beautiful shark. And because it's so unique, you can kind of get it wrong really easily. So there's certain things about the body shape, the dynamics, the proportions that I really want to focus on, for example, what is a side profile? Even though a lot of these, these whale sharks are top down, I might have one kind of coming in and rotating just to give a little variation. So I've got like a, you know, a couple reference images of what they look like from a side profile, photos of them arching, side in action, you know? And all of these are just gonna help kind of enrich the experience for me as the, the you know, the sketch artist. The artist, and yes. Really build volume. <laughs> that's kind of where we like to start. That's yeah. my, that's where I come in usually. Right. Yeah, the proportions are so important too because otherwise it starts to look a little wonky and i think with yeah. anything that's like an animal or a person when there's anatomical things involved mm -hmm. people might not necessarily know why they think something looks weird but <laughs> it just does it's look weird, weird. you know like if someone right. draws like, like your eyes too far on the top of the head or something it's like even someone who's not uh, versed in art at all, like you right. kind of tell, like I don't know what something weird. Yeah, something got I don't drawing know what's weird. going on, but it looks like, like your cousin or like <laughs> your aunt or something. Yes, I That's totally so get. Long. I totally get what you mean, and I think it's really important when we're talking about wildlife is like. Um, someone who is an expert could be like, oh, that's not a whale shark at all. And you want it to uh, be one, right? Or I like even people. or even like um, just making sure that you're not getting something really far off. Like you said, like right. the proportions as simple as like having that fin a little too high up mm -hmm. might make it look like a different shark, right? That's right. like exactly. maybe has nothing to do with conservation. <laughs> yeah. So these right. are like careful things, like very specific yeah. things that I feel like you guys totally get, but we're just giving a little context for the the viewers on the stream, like why yeah. it's really important to build out your references, really collect mm -hmm. them, really mm -hmm. pay attention to those details because mm -hmm. they're going to make your piece come to life in the end and differentiate it from other animals, other scenes, whatever it may be. Yeah. So this is super neat. I wanted to ask you because you have so many pictures here of the mm -hmm. shark whale shark sorry um yeah. uh are you watching did you watch any videos of whale sharks to like get an understanding of motion yes. um or anything like that yes uh definitely been diving into that um there was there was been a lot of uh conservation around whale sharks because of the shark finning industry, uh, industry mm -hmm. and the effects that has on you know all the apex predators but um i feel like we've just kind of immersed ourselves 
through projects we've been uh, involved with and different uh, art activism groups we've been working with. Yeah. And then being from Hawaii, we just kind of like are always referencing video or seeing like swimming with sharks or being in the ocean. Right, being sharks. immersed in nature. Yeah, it's part <laughs> of life over here. Yeah. Beautiful. That I is love it. Thing, um, because one of the reasons that we chose the whale shark is because shark finning is such mm -hmm. a problem, but not necessarily a lot of people know about it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, what is shark finning? What are we talking about? And that's that um, whale sharks and millions of other sharks around the world are killed every year. I mean, every day, really, mm -hmm. um, just for their fins. Just so okay. they'll be captured. They'll be, you know, brought onto the boat. Their fin will be cut off and then the rest of the shark will just be thrown overboard yeah. Ugh, uh, that's horrible. horrible yeah because the shark fin is a delicacy specifically for shark fin soup yeah um is mm. really popular in certain countries. and these whale sharks have immense fins and so they actually are pretty valuable on that market Jeez, that's I'm really sure. like saddening to hear yeah. right because it's so exploitive of the of the whale shark who's just minding their own business mm -hmm. and you know there's a whole soup inspired by by right. the only resource that that you know is hard to get from them or whatever yeah. that's terrible and yeah. uh no offense to anyone who loves whale shark whale fin soup but we want to raise awareness here to what is it? Um, oh, conser conserving whale sharks. I, yeah. I didn't know how to say that really, all like as a verb. Yeah, really all <laughs> sharks. Yeah. They're all really on the on the menu in that in that way. Mm -hmm. And it's just all related to the idea of like you take out one element of the food pyramid or the ecosystem, ecosystem. and the whole thing will collapse. So sharks right. are super important because they make sure that the ecosystem is healthy. They take out like the sick and the, the other types of shark fish that are you know, would would be detrimental to the ecosystem. Right. Super, super key. It all goes down, trickles down to the coral reefs and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Oh, we can go on. Population controls in certain yeah. areas, right? And so it's like if if they're gone, then other populations mm -hmm. flourish and then all the things go off. Everything <laughs> gets messed <laughs> up. We need yeah. to conserve sharks and whale sharks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why you're creating this beautiful piece so we can talk about this. Um, let us know in the comments. Uh, this is a like a fun question I wanted to ask everyone. If you have a favorite wild animal, let us know in the comments because yeah. we're talking we're talking about ocean conservation specifically. But if you have a general wild animal, I'm down. I like sea turtles. Every time I see them, I'm Ooh, just like yeah. so enamored by them. They're so cute. They live so long. Mm -hmm. I love it. Love I love them as a concept. Um, <laughs> even though I've probably only seen them like you know at a zoo or something, but. Oh, Still. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turtles. No, they're amazing. I feel like you guys probably get some natural exposure to sea turtles. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Green sea turtles and uh, hawksbill turtles are here in Hawaii. And so they're really mm -hmm. frequently seen here. Um, actually, our kiddo is five years old and yeah. he finally got to that point where he let us put a mask over his face, um, you know, to go snorkeling. And so uh, now he ducks his head underwater and sees the fish and it's totally blown his mind. Oh like gosh. we've told him it would, you know, the past few yeah. years, but he didn't believe us. <laughs> and now he, he couldn't see it for himself. Snorkeling. He couldn't see it for himself. How was right. he supposed to know how wonderful it would be? I mean, even myself, I feel like I watched, you know, what is it? Is it Disney or Pixar? The Finding Nemo movie? And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. that's so, so cool. But until I saw it when I went snorkeling, I didn't realize exactly how like real it is. Because to me, it's like mythical almost because I don't have any exposure. Where did you see a turtle? Where would you go? Where did you go? I, I don't know if I saw a turtle. I think I saw some in real like in mm -hmm. nature um mm -hmm. i was out in mexico swimming somewhere i can't remember the exact it might have been Whoa. cozumel um mm -hmm. and it was oh, clear yeah. enough water that i saw like real sea life you know wow. i saw like wild fish and uh what's it called um oh yeah. i'm forgetting the name sea horse sea horses sea horse. horses yeah. <laughs> horse oh they're fish. so cute and once i saw them i was like wow this is real like they are not just like <laughs> drawings or you know animated movies so right. i feel like make it much more relatable really that. yeah yes, yeah exactly because once you see it out in the wild you're like how could i be harming these animals mm -hmm. um yeah is there any animal um aside from the whale shark native to hawaii that you feel really passionate about oh yeah well, turtles are definitely up there. Turtles are up I, there. Because you see them a lot, they, uh, turtles have to come up for air. So that's when you'll see them. I mean, that's the thing about the, the ocean, right? That's, that's my right. favorite. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> but one thing I was going to say about, you know, what you just mentioned in conservation is that, um, you know, people will go to national parks and see the deer and that kind of thing. But the ocean mm -hmm. for a lot of people, it's just kind of this flat surface. Unless you go under, you don't get to see that wildlife. Mm -hmm. But the diversity underwater is, um, you know, just as rich, if not it's more rare, species, yeah. you know, below the surface. But it's so rarely mm -hmm. seen and some of it will never see uh, because it's just so deep. Right. Um, so that's why it's so important for these kind of awareness things. Um, but yeah, speaking of a favorite animal, the ray, mm -hmm. like the stingray is one of my favorites. Oh, so nice they one. are really yeah. like crazy when you see them. It's just, yeah. I mean, I kind of feel that, that way um, about all sea life, right? Because it's, they don't have legs, right? It's not yeah. like... Mm -hmm a chipmunk that has is like normal <laughs> in my mind um it's They're so like otherworldly yeah, yeah under the under the sea is like another world and you're so right stingrays are super super crazy i grew up in florida and we had manatees and yeah, manatees. alligators and manatees are so cute and they're endangered too i believe yeah. um mm -hmm. and it's so right. sad because they're so like gentle you're just like how how's anyone hurting you <laughs> Right. And that's the thing too. I think the manatees are having the same issue with whale sharks is a lot of times they're um, also getting boat strikes. Mm -hmm. So they're yes. just getting hit by motor motor boats and it's and the that saddest takes thing a lot when you of see a manatee just like all marked up. You're just up, like, you yeah. sweet little baby. You were just oh, no. minding yeah. your own business, being eating, a manatee. Eating kelp. Or, yeah, or doing easy. what you do and you get hurt. It's so rude. I know. Um, yes. yes, everyone in the comments is telling us they love seahorses. Ooh, People horses. are saying deer, um, which you mentioned earlier. So I love all these um, wild animals. Everyone keep commenting your wild animals. And if you have any questions for these two, drop them in the comments too, because we're keeping an eye on the chat. Don't be shy. Bring, bring us your questions. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. No, I wanted to ask you, tell me what you're doing here in this piece. So we're on Adobe Fresco on the iPad. Yeah. What tools are you using and why? It, okay. I'm just pretty much keeping it simple right now because we're in the sketch phase yeah. and I'm just using pencil and erase and eraser. Um, one thing I like to do is I'll have a keyboard Bluetooth to okay. the iPad and that way I can kind of just toggle between, you know, B for brush and then you can hit B again and it'll switch it to the next brush that you have, you know, in your, in your queue. That's super you hit it handy. E. I haven't seen anyone work like that really? on, at, at least oh. on the stream. I haven't, okay. I've seen it. I've seen people talk about working this yeah, way, on like street. on, That's how on YouTube and stuff like that. But on the stream, you're, you're using it. And yeah. that explains so much because I haven't seen you frantically tapping. <laughs> oh yeah. You don't see me doing this. Yeah. I, yes. I always try and find out the shortcuts, um, whether it's on Photoshop, a lot of people are probably using the shortcuts in Photoshop because you have to. Yes. So you can do the same thing on the iPad. So I, I highly it. suggest. This is such a cool tip, you guys. If you work on your iPad, which you should be, because we're mm -hmm. showing you how great it is to work on Fresco. <laughs> also use a little keyboard to toggle between these shortcuts. So you save yourself yeah. those pencil Nothing moments. complicated. Pretty cheap. You know, I love it. There. That's so handy. You're just being Smaller, way more effective. Yeah. So can you show us which pencil you're using? I sure. feel like people are always very nosy about which yeah. brush you're using. Which <laughs> brush you're using. <laughs> I feel like a little underwhelming and I apologize if there's no like, you know, custom brushes that I've made here, but it's just a regular pencil, 10 pixels. Um, I do have in my recent, I have this, this chunk, chunk, chunk brush. I just chunk like the brush. sound of it. And then when I tried it out, um, I was like, well, this could be nice to lay down a star layer. You know, it, nice. it sort yes, of gives yes, a little, yes. You see how it has that texture? Giving us a little bit of texture mm -hmm. so it's not totally flat. Right. And that'll be on a separate layer. So that's just, let me just undo that with my keyboard. Uh, and then, <laughs> Magician. Right? Yes, and totally. That This is all, the reason I'm just working with pencil and that I have that chunk brush is I want this to, like when this is finished, it won't really have a um, vector clean crispness to it. I do want to sort of, um, Bring about like a, a, a texture and almost like a sumi ink um Got it. you know okay, okay organic feel to it or something mm -hmm. like that like you could reach out and touch the paper and feel it and why do you think you prefer that over working with like vector i mean i mm -hmm. too 
prefer to work in raster because of the texture yeah. but why do you think that is for your work that you're so um attracted to like the, the raster the pixel brushes yeah i think it's mainly because of our um background as um uh, artists who, who usually would do paintings we do murals um i honestly really still love to draw with pencil on paper because i love yes. the resistance but the reality is that like this is we're in our art studio we have all these you know pencils and pens and fun things that we used to use but, but don't now, use much anymore it's like <laughs> ipad do the sketch on the ipad i have a time lapse i have i can just send it off to the client via a text message or email like it's just so so convenient so yeah. I, I have to agree it. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least you're kind of staying true to what you like about your own artwork when you work traditionally, which is that mm -hmm. texture, the richness that it gives you, how it gives right. you more depth to work with those tools as opposed to like a flat vector brush. So I totally feel you and I agree. I have a lot of art tools that sadly don't get used as much because right. the iPad is just so handy. It's just kind <laughs> of, awesome. it becomes a no brainer after a while, especially when like a client wants to change or make an edit. If you were working oh traditionally, God. can you imagine like <gasps> having we to remember the whole days. thing? Oh, yeah, <laughs> they were not we, fun. <laughs> we do. I think that's the, the funny thing about us like having worked so long as we were in the analog mm -hmm. transition to digital like the pre-ipad and now having the ipad so it's like we really I mean, appreciate all the brushes that are available and like these apps that you can use yeah. just like mind-blowing how even, things have changed so quickly i mean even the amount of um, scanning we used to do because to build textures into a piece in photoshop I would literally go and do a watercolor side thing and she would do some some washes and then we'd scan, scan it, them, overlay <laughs> it, multiply or yeah. whatever yeah. other thing. Now no. with uh, with our phones, we'll just take a picture of the texture out in the world and yeah. upload that through the um, the Adobe uh, Color app that I have. It's, yes, it's is so it Adobe great. Capture? Yes, yes, Capture. I love Capture. Oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> I feel like it does my not library. get enough love. Adobe yeah. Capture is so handy. If you're it's on the if you're watching the stream right now, you never heard of Adobe Capture. Oh yeah. Um, you have to check it out. Maybe Cody can drop the link in the chat. But like you said, it allows you to capture textures and colors. I don't know if you've tried it yourself, but have uh, you tried it? it? Can grab like fonts in the wild. Yes, I've noticed that. Yeah, in the it's wild. It's so cool. Fonts. I like. Yes. That. Yeah. You know when you it's see amazing. something at like a grocery store and you're like, "That's a cool font. Maybe I want that." Or at a museum, sometimes I'll grab fonts from museums. It's cool. Yeah. Or the colorways. I really like how you can just take a picture and then it'll like boop 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 boop, and it'll arrange like five colors, and it does a really good job of like picking. Taking five nice colors. Yeah, no, I know. Exactly. And then it'll bring them right into the app. So if you're using, I think you can have it show up in Fresco, but I know you can definitely have it show up in Photoshop, all your colors automatically, which is like, yeah, makes definitely makes you feel like you're living in the future. We you are know, like, this we is what the phone the was meant for to <laughs> capture the colors that I want in the wild and bring them yeah. to my right. iPad for later. <laughs> yeah. No, because before it's like, you'd take a picture of something and then you'd have to remember it later and then maybe the picture wasn't an accurate capture of what the thing you actually colors saw were was. Yes. or you're just like or you're trying to i know for us we would like text each other photos or um mm -hmm. like write little notes through text and it's actually a horrible way to keep track of things like you think like oh yeah it'll be in the text feed somewhere but you don't realize how much you actually text so you're just scrolling yeah you're just scrolling <laughs> you're just like, forever where's, where's that picture when was that last year of that thing that we saw no like, we have a lot of our ideas terrible. so it's funny like we're right next to each other right now but in day to day like i could be in the garage we could be in different studios or whatnot but we get an idea and then we'll text each other so that we don't forget. I don't know how yes. many great ideas we've had that have just been lost in lost like to this ether of text. I don't know. I love it. Like, I feel like that's dinner? that's such a funny right because you guys are mixing work and life, yeah. Yeah. personal life. So in this, you guys have to have two separate text threads. Which I don't even know <laughs> if it's possible, but it's like a work thread and a personal work life thread. thread because otherwise you're getting your colors mixed with what's for dinner, mixed with like you know, the grocery the list, Take the kid yes, up it's, it gets crazy. So <laughs> speaking of this, you know, balance between your professional and your personal relationship, how do you guys find balance oh. or what works for you in 
as an art duo that works together, right? Because you guys work together as Wooden Wave. Right. Right. Yeah, I think um, it's definitely something that's not easy, um, especially because so we're both artists and we're both painters and drawers. And so to figure out mm -hmm. a style that um, kind of combines both of our interests and subject matter that we're both into, um, I think the subject matter was the easiest part because we're both drawn to the same type of things and we had the same um, artists that we were inspired by. Yep. Um, for example, Thomas Campbell, um, Swoon, who's um, a like wheat paste graffiti mm -hmm. artist. Jay Ryan. Um, Jay Ryan, who comes from poster. the Ch Chicago poster scene. Yeah, poster scene in um, Chicago. Yeah, I'm trying Stuff. to think. I always like when I listen to other artists talking when they drop who they're inspired by so I can go and look up those people. Yes, too. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure um, everyone's going to be looking up these people and if they haven't heard of them already. Yeah, so I Jay appreciate Ryan. that you're sh you're being generous with your inspiration. Yes. Oh yeah, oh, thanks. No, we got to shout out artists that inspired us, right? We're yeah. always standing on the shoulders of people mm -hmm. who came before us. Um, but yeah, when we mentioned Jay Ryan, so uh, when we say like poster scene, it's kind of like uh, music tour posters, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, screen printing it was actually a big yeah. part of our kind of education in college and. Um, helped us to develop kind of like a graphic style. Right. I think like a lot of art students or like surfer kids, skater kids, um, <laughs> we started off with a t-shirt brand in yeah, the beginning. Yeah, we want to have our own. Yes, <laughs> I love that you mentioned that. <laughs> that is that. like the beginning, right? Because you can't yeah. afford the ones yeah. that are out there. So you're like, oh, I'll just make, first yeah. you start with knockoffs and then you're yeah. like, wait, I can make my own original design. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No. Fun. It, and it's like this idea of you know seeing your artwork on a t-shirt mm -hmm. is just like really fun to see like your friends wearing them and then we started putting them in a bunch of stores so then we would see strangers out on oh, you know in town best. wearing it special that is so like, special yeah they don't know they don't know that that's me i know, right? I know right? walk up to them get all excited. like hey that's a really nice shirt man like <laughs> Looks good on you. I never did that. <laughs> ah, I love but it though. No, you like, have to put yourself on. You have to do that. You have to be, you know, excited about your own brand. But I love to know that that was like something that you guys mutually got excited about and worked together on. I'm assuming, yes. but correct. That me was our first <laughs> venture together. Um, and then we kind of realized that, you know, when you're artists and you both kind of have your idea ideas of what you know art should look like mm -hmm. that's when the ego can get in the way right yeah. and so you have to learn like what do I want to compromise on and I think it goes for like romantic relationships or parental <laughs> relationships or like any kind of any working relationship, relationship. Yeah. but it's there's always something that the other person or entity cares about more um and then there's always something that you care about more than what they care yeah. about so you know so it's like which line. Like which hill are you gonna priorities. stand on yeah. yeah you know so it's like Compromise. we might be painting a mural and he's like oh let's paint that blue and and i'm like no i thought i was thinking that would be green you know yeah. and then he's like i really really think that should be blue and then i'm like yeah, i actually don't really care that much so okay yeah, let's make it blue, that's, you know that's the <laughs> oversimplification of the conversation but that's basically it in yeah. a nutshell we to make it short we know each other's kind of like i guess the the audio like signifiers that oh she's really she's really hanging on yeah, to this like, we, there's a language that's kind she's of not gonna get over that so yeah and like do versa, it. you know she's like okay Got he's it. really digging his heels in on this one like knowing <laughs> to be like okay, okay i'm not gonna just fight this for the sake of winning an argument but you might take that moment to be like okay if that's gonna be this <laughs> You then made harder. I want this to be the, you know, Got like, it. The, I feel oh. like what you're describing is the client artist relationship, but mm -hmm. also now you That's guys true. are also the clients to each other, right? Because you're yeah. like uh, bouncing the idea, the execution, any decision making between each other, aside right. from the client who might have an influence as well. Right. right. Yeah. For example, like, you know, they might have a deadline, you know, can we get it in by this date? And mm -hmm. right. like, yes, that is possible. However, you had talked about <laughs> how you wanted to include this in the piece, um, given this newer timeline, that wouldn't be possible, you know, to have it due a week earlier or something like right, that. Right, right. We can't cross hatch prefer? all this stuff manually <laughs> in yeah. one day on a mural. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, no. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> totally. Got yeah. it. I love it. And so you guys are able to kind of, so what you're telling me is you, you guys like compromise on this decision making in your artwork, but how would you say it's beneficial to be working in a duo? Because what I'm hearing is like, oh, to work in a duo, you need to compromise. Um, yeah. But what are the perks <laughs> of working in a duo that would make you want, you know, because you yeah. guys could be working yep. separately. Totally. Yeah, I think the benefit for sure is it um, it definitely gives us confidence that we can figure things out mm -hmm. faster because you're not just doing it alone. You know, like yes. we're quick to say yes to projects that we might not have done before mm -hmm. because we're like, there's two of us, we'll figure it out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes, like if one of us isn't a pro at that, maybe right. the other one can figure it out. Figure it out, yeah. And then, um, that. and we've also figured out too, like, I'm a painter, but I'm not the best drawer. So Matt is always the drawer. So you'll notice that my hands are free because I'm not drawing. Got um, it. Yeah, so I've over the years taken over more the role of like art director, project manager, I don't know, CEO, like oh. business visionary, you know. Like, I think ideation is is probably yeah, she's a lot of times her strong suit. Whereas mine is just like, oh, Tell me what to do. I'll just focus on drawing sharks for the next two hours. Executing, <laughs> yes. Well, that is two different parts of the process, yeah. right? Because like yeah. brainstorming. Uh, yeah, sometimes I really dread brainstorming. But once you have the concept, it's a lot yeah. easier to, for me Get to going. Yeah. Right. finish it all the way through. And sometimes it's vice versa. So it's really cool mm -hmm. that you guys can kind of divide the artistic labor, right? Because it <laughs> is a lot. Okay. It is a lot of labor. So mm -hmm. yeah, I love hearing about this division. <laughs> it's, it's so fun. neat. I think it's actually played to both our strengths because my um, passion is the idea process. Like I get excited. I love diving into the research and figuring out like, what are some fun mm -hmm. like Easter eggs that we can hide into this piece? You know, um, you know, what place are we doing a mural at? Like, what is the history of this place? What are the cultures of this place? Is there anything, um, you know, cool that we might be able to include in there? Mm -hmm. um, we did a mural that was on the side of a ice cream shop. So in the mural, we were able to include some ice cream, um, yeah. you know, so just so like cute. looking for, you know, even though we weren't doing the mural for the ice cream shop, that just happened to be the location of uh, where the mural festival was, like as just like a fun hidden tribute, we were able to include some things from um, you know, the ice cream the location yes. that they had in there. And so the owners were just really You know what stoked. else is, <laughs> is really cool? And I don't think we talk about it too often, but the fact that there's two of us, when we're working on murals, murals are a very um, public display of art. And which is, which is why we love it um, because of it, it allows people to see process. But a lot of times too, and this is great, people will come up and they'll want to ask questions and they'll want to talk. And when you're on a deadline with a project, with a mural, like when you slow down, you really feel it. Like it, the yes. project is slog. Yeah. So having two people allows one of us, whoever's closest, to keep working and the other person can field questions and, and do the yeah. things that we love to do, like connect with the audience. Yeah, that is so, so true. Because otherwise you have to have kind of like a friend okay. who maybe yeah. kind of gets what's going on. You right. throw them out there to the wolves. <laughs> yeah. um, so I a think lot of mural so artists. Cool. Yeah, what a lot of mural artists do will have those big headphones yeah. so that even if they're not on, it just kind of sends the signal like, hi, I'm, I'm working. Busy. Like, yeah, I'm just, I, this is a working moment. Yeah, yeah. It it's not fun. It's, it's very stressful. I think a lot of, um, you know, people see mural festivals as, you know, like something super cool and like exciting, which it is, but it's also very stressful because you have a week or less to create a mural um and then that's kind of the deadline you know a lot of times you're flown into mm -hmm. another place um we're yeah, based that's in a hawaii. lot of pressure yeah we're based in hawaii but we have murals you know in a bunch of different states as um as far from us as uh, worcester massachusetts and so you know our plane flight is a certain day to come back and the festival ends you yeah. know um so we need to have that mural done within five or six days and so if we get taken away, you know, 20 minutes of a conversation here, you know, right. there, yeah, there. It, it, it all chips away. It all chips up. away at your working time. 
And I think it's really cool that you guys have like some built in manual labor, right? Because it's two of you, I'm assuming for one mural, which yeah. is already way better um, yeah. than one person having to maybe hire someone to help them out. Or uh, maybe you guys hire people too, if it's a really big mural anyway, but at least you have two people kind of devoted and aligned with the mission, right? As opposed to like right. me, if I were to ask my partner, he would do it. But like, you know, we're not, you know, he doesn't know the intricate of why I picked yellow over the other color right. and like why this is very specific and you got to stick to the plan you know so like <laughs> I like that you guys can be like this coordinating duo and tackle those bigger projects together mm -hmm. um you know kind of just naturally having a little bit of an advantage so I think that's super cool <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks yeah especially because we're inspired really like detail. <laughs> yeah we love details so we really like to get in there and put as much as possible, which means that it always takes a really long time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So no, like... you guys' work is so, so <laughs> intricate. I mean, you're creating, I know you have this piece is, is pretty intricate. There's a lot of, I can see you going into a lot of line work here, mm -hmm. but even in some of the other pieces that you showed earlier, everything mm -hmm. has a ton of detail. And so I'm sure having that second eye is really helpful um, just to tell you like, that's working, that's not working, yes. too much detail, not enough detail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So how do you guys work with each other to give each other that feedback? Yeah, I I mean, I know for a fact, like you when you said having that second eye, um, that second set of eyes is like one of the more important things for me because like I said, I really focus in on details and I don't really look at, I don't often zoom out and really think about the project as a whole, the context. I really just dive into like right now, I'm so interested in the anatomy and I come from like a background of figure drawing so I love building the structure of the the whale shark and I can just do this you know for hours without really keeping in mind timelines <laughs> or uh, color schemes <laughs> or even just the narrative of the piece and so that's where Roxy is to it. And be like hey snap out of it you know <laughs> <laughs> and for me as an artist every artist kind of carries probably their own ego whether or not they you know acknowledge it or not and i acknowledge that i still am always like defensive about the work that i've done if it's been a lot of work <laughs> and i'll be like oh no it's got it's fine like it's worth it it's worth it but, it's yeah. like, uh... <laughs> but then you just i just know to like allow myself to feel a little grumpy about something like that which she said and then just let it sit and then <laughs> it percolates and then i realize oh shoot she's probably do yeah, you feel like you guys right. have to be more careful with how you give feedback because you have to deal with the with the other person oh, the rest see. of the day, let's say, right? As opposed to like if I'm someone's coworker at an office uh, and I say, mm, I think this paper like isn't very good. Can you redo it? Bye. Right. And you go home and everyone does their own thing and you come back the next day. You got are you guys fitting in breaks from each other? Like what's going on after some feedback, some hard oh, feedback? Yeah. This is a great therapy session. It's like a dual, <laughs> dual purpose here. We've Thank got, you. We're on the couch here. <laughs> no, it's a great question. Yeah. No, I think I'm just um, wondering because it's a lot more of a right. like you're at, you know, you can't separate work and life as much. No, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think maybe it's a a weird ability, but we spend like all day together, <laughs> every day together. And yeah. somehow it works. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> I think for sure we've learned over time, like how to give feedback to each other without like being insulting. Yeah. Or I think that's the danger actually of being so yeah. close is that um, you don't have the formality that you would necessarily yeah. have with a coworker. Like, hi, you know, I noticed that this thing is, the you niceties. know, might be missing. You know, you have a certain way right. that you work with coworkers because you can't just be like, dude, fix that thing. Like, hello, don't be stupid. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, um, uh, when you're formal with each other, even like a friend or something, you're just like, what were you thinking? Blah, 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 yeah. blah. You know, um, <laughs> so, you know, we've learned over the years, like how to say things in a way that's like not personally insulting. Like we're just talking about the art here. I'm not sure. Right. This is ability. just about the client. This is not about, how you overdo every line this is not yeah. about that no right. and to Roxy's credit I will say she's really good at that she's a very even with our kid like in dealing with with those certain sort of situations she's very level uh even keel and if anything I'm probably more of the I know I am more of the reactionary. <laughs> we're getting a lot yeah. of truths coming yeah, out here. I am. and so I need to work 
always on just being aware of the fact that, yeah, you're going to like initially feel offended a little bit and like defensive. But then I take a step back and I realize the the way she approached her feedback was always pretty measured. And I, yes. I got to be like, oh, man, don't be a jerk. <laughs> it's hard when you're like, <laughs> I recognize that it's hard when you're stressed out and you're yeah. under a deadline and you've worked hard on something because you've kind of got lost yeah, I in a place that it's hard to bring yourself out and like realize like, oh man, I have to do this other stuff too. And it's like, you know, cause it's like, well, if you hadn't spent an hour doing this <laughs> part, you would have had more time to do the other part, but I'm not going to say that, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just going to yeah. be like, that looks amazing. Um, but we also have to, you know, do this, you know, the, the whole point of this piece is to convey a certain, uh -huh. you know, message. It's looking pretty crowded on over on that area. How about we take this fish, move that over there. Let's balance out the space, move this over here. Like I try to be more yep. like tactical. Um, I love that. Like, I love that because I feel like as artists in general, we do overthink a lot of stuff. Right. And so when, when you're working Matt, and you are, you know, just hashing out the details of one element, um, you kind of can, Roxy, bring it back to the full picture, keep the client in mind, which you're not usually, sometimes it's really hard to kind of balance those two sides of your brain, like mm -hmm. you, the artist, trying to make a piece that you like, mm -hmm. and also you trying to make a piece the client likes, you know, you have to keep those two priorities in mind. And I like that one of you can be kind of more focused on the personal artwork and the other oh. one can keep the client in mind because it is a business. Mm -hmm. So I love that. And I think that's such a cool way to split it because it's really hard. I feel like when you're trying to do it all to kind of quality control yourself. Mm. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I think if any, in any kind of like creative endeavor, like, you know, the writer needs their editor, mm -hmm. you know, that exactly, kind of exactly. So. I love it. I want to know in the <laughs> chat for anyone who is for all of our viewers, whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're watching on Behance, let me know in the chat if you have a creative collaborator that you go to. And if you have any questions about collaboration, because these two have been doing it for a long time. <laughs> They're pros. I mean, I'm sure they're still figuring some stuff out, but they yeah. have it on lock. So if you have questions, <laughs> bring it to us. I'll pass it on to them as we continue working on this gorgeous whale shark piece in or honor of the hashtag create waves campaign um so yeah just bring your questions and if you're watching on youtube remember to subscribe to adobe lives channel so you don't miss part two of the stream tomorrow um and any other great stream that we have okay back uh, to our little conversation um i love it it's like blowing my mind that you guys can help each other out so much because i feel like i'm always asking just random people in my life to give me feedback i'm like what do you think <laughs> you know what do you think what do you think what what do you have anything to say <laughs> right and i love that you guys oh, can be like good. aligned <laughs> yeah no i think it is like um really important if you can find somebody like i think maybe even another you know, creative another creative that yeah. you find, like through exactly. a chat you know yeah. watching a live like this you know um there's so many different ways that you can find artists that you mm -hmm. align with um you know whether that's online through social media or you know finding someone whose portfolio like on Behance like I think yes. even just following different artists whose aesthetic you like it mm. you know feeds into your education about like how people use spacing um like we talked about the artists yeah. that we really loved like we really studied their color usage um because there's a way that you can use color in more kind of subtle ways that we color were theory. that we're always trying to figure out actually yeah. yes. um color theory is something that we really um love um and it's you're just always dialing it in or like trying new ways to mm -hmm. create certain emotions um we tend to use a lot of bright fun colors because our work is about bringing together sustainability and joy. So mm -hmm. how can you have these kind of eco themed pieces, but then have them just be really fun and playful. So it's not like this is about, you know, saving the earth or yeah, something that's like, you don't, you, don't too, you don't want to make it too serious where you're yeah. alienating people from just the fun right. of nature right. in itself yeah. and the joy of nature. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So we really like to use fun and bright colors, but we're also looking at ways too to make sure that it has, you know, some kind of like, artistic sophistication to mm -hmm. it as well if we can you yeah. know or some kind of complexity or a way to bring in fun details through color or little nuances through color you know and one thing i was thinking about and we're inside of our, our art studio but we're lucky that we have this space where there's other artists outside in this kind of collaborative space that we have 
and um, not everyone has access to a, a creative community like that in real time. But now yeah. with the way um, we're all connected through social media or through Behance, like Roxy said, or even through Adobe live stream where people are, you know, talking in the, in the chat. Yeah. I feel like there's a community and there's a shared like lack of like, oh, I'm, I'm not alone in these yeah. issues of dealing with this client or I'm dealing with this problem. And so-and-so is also dealing with that. Like yeah. we, as artists, a lot of times we isolate, especially when we're digital artists, we, we can afford to be like in our, in our studio, in our, in our bed working. Um, but it's nice to have, people around <laughs> yeah. in person. I totally yeah. agree. I wow. feel like um, artists in general, and I feel like maybe it's always yeah. been a thing, like yeah. for all of history, I feel like art making is yeah. kind of personal, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like it's a private practice. Like you make the art and then you show the art. It's yes. never been like that in uh, public, the right. actual art making process. Yeah. And right. I feel like it can be really isolating. And then you compound that with the past couple of years of a pandemic, oh it's gosh, been yeah. extra isolating, right? Like any community yeah. that you might have had just become strained. Yes. And it's so key to have community to bounce ideas off of. I mean, you guys have like each other to kind of have this mm -hmm. automatic everyday kind of partner but if if you don't have that you can always reach out to friends art friends um even i always find like even friends that i have that aren't artists who maybe mm -hmm. are creative like yeah mm, knit true. or so or whatever maybe still have like a perspective that can add something to you or give you some sort of feedback that you might have not seen because you're like so zoned into the project um so yeah i think having a creative community is key and we have a really great one here on behance and on our adobe live streams everyone is awesome. so awesome who shows up to our chat so hey. shout out to you guys in the chat um but i can't agree more it's essential to have like a community to help you break out of your own mind a little bit right yeah. you can you can really like fixate as an artist on like the tiniest thing and it takes someone to be like you're looking at that, but what about this? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I've been uh, I've been thinking about this kind of like joke that's that's true for me that um, this may be true for other guys as well, where I say that I have this unique ability to um, overthink and underthink something at the same time. And so like a lot of time we say like, oh, guys don't, you know, they can't multitask, but like I'm multitasking by doing underthinking and overthinking at, at, the, the, same, same time. at the same time like, am oh i gosh. am i doing too much or oh, i totally forgot to do something else like i, I just mix them all together. overthinking one area yeah. and completely underthinking the other yeah or it's a tough right. thing to balance um especially i feel like the creation process versus the mm. critiquing process because you can't be super like critiquing your work while you're making it because you'll never you'll never finish right um so it's like a, a total balance and i feel like you guys have an advantage by being able to split some of those tasks up or trade yeah. off mm -hmm. that's really helpful um yeah. so, so it, it is i think one of the benefits for sure of having the two of us um like when we're working on a painting matt will draw out the composition like mm -hmm. i guess in a like a quick process it's like um that was my next question yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like how do we work together you know when we take on a project like usually what it is um let's say for the purposes of probably this audience if mm -hmm. it's like the client piece or something that's a commission um you know we'll have some direction for who from whoever that entity is you know whether mm -hmm. they actually have a creative brief or not usually it's fairly general for us at this point you know it, it might have a theme but um, we're usually responsible for coming up with the concept. Right. Um, and so, you know, that from then we'll, you know, just spitball a bunch of ideas mm -hmm. back and forth, write them down um, in a sketchbook. I think there is something like how you we said about use <laughs> using like a pen into paper. Like, I feel like it drives the thought process a little bit more for mm -hmm. some reason. There's just something about it. The tactileness. The tactile. Even your calendar. You still use paper. Oh, yeah. It's like right here. I still use like a paper that. planner. Ooh, I do cool. too. I do too. I think it's really the something about like, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like you're going through a medium. It feels like it's your mm -hmm. raw brain yeah. on the paper. Yeah. Um, and sometimes when you're working on something like an iPad or on a computer, it feels like you're translating it into it or something yeah it doesn't it yeah it doesn't feel like you're taking it into your brain in the same way i feel like when you're hand drawing it, it really like cements that idea into your mind it feels um, like you're one with the paper 
<laughs> something like that it's wonderful though whatever yes, it is yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah so we'll jot down you know ideas i like to um work in like idea notes form he likes to work in thumbnail form so yes. he'll draw out just like tiny little okay. images um in pencil of what those might look like so we'll say like okay let you know for example if it was this whale shark image like mm -hmm. okay how about we do one where the whale shark is centered one where there's a lot of whale sharks yeah uh you know we'll just kind of give diff a bunch of different options you know and then from the thumbnails we'll narrow it down to which idea we think is strongest mm -hmm. and then i'll just leave at that point and go to answer emails or something like that <laughs> um and then he'll get to you know figuring out some bigger yeah. sketches you know maybe it'll be two or three maybe it's just one that's just like pretty solid you know right. and then he'll text me a photo of it and be like what do you think and yep. then um, you know, cause I'm in the house with the kid or I'm running errands or who knows, <laughs> we might be in just, I might be in the yard. He might be in the house. Right, um, right, right. But like I said, our text feed is our channel, right? Yeah. It's like our Slack channel. That's your Slack. <laughs> yes. It's our, it's That's our text Slack. feed. And you know, it's really funny is like in those moments that I'm waiting for her response, are they're quite tense. I'm just like, Ooh, I wonder if she's going to like it. Like, I think yeah, I like she's just, she's just sitting there the I'm dots. watching the dots. How like, do I respond to this? I hate it. Now she's I know, she, Is she going to give me an emoji on this one? Or right. a thumbs up? Or she just gives you a thumbs up? What do you do yeah. with that? You're just like, like okay. If I'm like, hmm. Yeah, if there's a hmm. I'm He's like, like right. oh, is that a good hmm hmm or a bad hmm? All right, here we go. So <laughs> interesting. <laughs> the suspense. Yeah. Um, I usually feel that feeling when I email it to the client, but mm -hmm. you guys have that within yourselves just because you're trying to organize your thoughts around it before you even go to the next phase. Interesting. Right. I yeah. love it. Okay. Yeah. It so, can go a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you get the sketch, um, yeah. you know, he takes the sketch as far as he wants. I'm assuming still sketch yep. though, right? Yeah. So we'll yep. do, you know, revisions. I'll be like, okay, that looks great. But I think that, you know, the whale's too big in the composition. I think it would be cool if we did some hand letter text, like how about this phrase would be kind of fun or catchy or like, how about we, because we've been together for a long time and we have a lot of the same influences, yeah. you know, we might reference an artist and be like, how about we throw in the colors of so-and-so, but like, let's do like a seventies, like retro aesthetic, maybe like that mm -hmm. would be kind of fun or, um, mm -hmm. I think one thing is that I'm really confident in his drawing abilities <laughs> and like what his, Aww. his capabilities are that I'm just, I, that's, what's fun about being the idea person is I get to come up with fun ideas for his talent. <laughs> right. You're like, um, Oh, you should draw cheers. this. And even if he's not yeah. so sure he hasn't drawn it a million times before you're right. confident it will work. Exactly. Actually, and it'll be cool worth, it will be worth it. Because yes. for me, that gives me, because a lot of times at the beginning of a project, you'll be like, oh man, this is such a big mountain to climb. And she's kind of like, oh, you'll figure it out. You know, you, you, you got you this. Like, the you are... <laughs> and I'm like, all right, all right, I guess, it, yeah, we've done this before. <laughs> Just need to trust the process. Yeah. And that's really the thing we always say between the two of us. Yeah, trust the process. And I think um, <clears throat> that's where. Yeah you know, figuring out where your strengths are and what maybe you can delegate or hire mm -hmm. someone else to do, um, or, you know, figure out time block a certain time for certain tasks. Um, like where I'm the project manager and how we have meetings is a conversation you can just even have in your own head is, mm -hmm. you know, I'll say like, okay, you know, this part that we're looking at here, how long do you think that will take you to complete? Yeah. Cause we still have the text that we need to do and we still need to, you know, render it yeah you know with color or something like that I you know he'll be like okay i think this will take me three days i'm like okay three days how about for coloring how long do you think that'll take for lettering how long do you think that okay i'm going to take give you like a week more than whatever you just gave me because life happens something always takes longer than you think it will okay like and then like repeat the process in your head you know like okay this will take this long this will take this long this will take this long. you know and then add it all together give yourself some healthy birth if you can um and then go from there and so that's and then we're just constantly checking in like okay are we okay you know you told me it was going to take three days for this has it it's, you, it's taking it's four. day four <laughs> yeah yeah it's a good so, that's a good pitch i might lose here someone's gonna be like are you for hire and then i'll, I'll lose my my, my teammate no, i love it i think this is really smart um even if you're watching this and you don't have a collaborator just thinking about treating yourself like 
you know, you are kind of like splitting the way you think about it as a project manager. And then as the artist, Mm -hmm. some things just have to be arbitrary. Like the deadline is arbitrary and you need to work backwards to make sure you can make it happen. You can't let a piece take a month if you only have a week, right? Right. You can't do the same techniques. You can't do the same detail. You just have to pare it down. Yeah. Um, you just have to be more point blank about it. And I think sometimes as artists, artists can get really emotional about their work. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you have to step back and just be like, we have a week, you know, you can't do the, what you are right. so passionate about just right. isn't going to work for this piece. Um, what else can you do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Managing expectations. That's our new word. That's another one. <laughs> managing expectations. I think, I um, it. Tell us about managing yeah. expectations. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, in times of COVID, I feel like a lot of people have really come to terms with that too like how you thought life was going to be at a certain point and then how things actually are or just true you know um really prioritizing your health and Mm -hmm. realizing like that is health as well you know um if you're not healthy everything else falls on the wayside um we were sick this last week and i didn't get you know i think more than three emails done (laughs) just because our kid was sick at the same time too and it's just like everything else falls away like if you don't have your health it just it doesn't work. Um, you don't, and you don't realize exactly how critical health is until you lose it, right? Until you're out <laughs> for a week and you're like, oh my gosh, everything I had to get done, it just is impossible. If oh, I'm yeah. sick or if I'm slightly under the weather, it just really, really Takes puts a damper on the on the original oh. plan. So mm-hmm. I think, yeah, you're you're bringing up a really a really good point, and I think it's cool that you know you guys have each other. So you know, if someone's feeling better than the other can kind of pick stuff up and then when you know that's really handy because you know i'm a solo artist and if something gets messed if i'm under the weather things just have to get pushed or you know change the original project um to meet those new expectations essentially right and i think it's hard too especially in this kind of um time we're living in of social media where it's like Mm. you constantly feel like you need to be posting like oh i didn't post in stories today i didn't post Oh, you know about this latest project. I mean, the things I wanted to post in the past week didn't that did not happen, right? Um, But it's you know you can beat yourself up over it, or you can just be like, you know what, that's life. It it will be okay. I will post it tomorrow or next week instead. Like the world is not going to end because I didn't post that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. Last yes, Tuesday, yes, yes. I'm posting it next Tuesday. It's okay. Yeah, Um, it's okay. I know. I think a lot of times. Uh, us creative folks have to remind ourselves like it's okay like if if the recent project you did didn't turn out like you wanted there's always another mm-hmm. project if you know like things are okay nothing is finite you have endless creative like w- ideas available executions available if what you just mm-hmm. did wasn't a masterpiece in your eyes mm-hmm. right Definitely. there's another masterpiece waiting for you yeah and so. I think that's where some kind of like a journal or you know sketchbook whatever like note taking um device or like just on the app you know yeah. just like having it on your ipad um mm-hmm. we've noticed the value of just having all these sketches of ideas mm. that you just kind of have in your off time that don't really come to realization anytime soon yeah um, no expectation of it being a final piece necessarily right it's almost just more like cathartic <laughs> well i think you know, we've gone back to sketches that we did mm-hmm. years ago, and then they finally became a mural for a client right. or a poster for a client. Right, or like, like a that. lingering idea can can mm-hmm. come to play to yeah. save the day some other time. Oh, definitely, you know? it's a definitely. it's really a fun actually. You know, to look go through the sketchbook and be like, okay, this client wants this thing. Like nothing's coming to my head right now. Yeah. Like let's just page the sketchbook and see if it'll trigger something. And sometimes we find a sketch that's just perfect. Like. Ah! Here we go. Oh, like, yeah. We finally that. get to create this idea. Like, yes, and get paid for it. Awesome. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Double awesome. Double awesome. Yeah. So cool. So actually something I wanted to ask you going back to the artwork that we're creating mm-hmm. um, today, but also your artwork in general is I noticed that you create, like we said before, really intricate pieces. We mentioned about it before about, you know, mm-hmm. getting getting way too tuned in sometimes. Yeah. So um, how do you balance like a sketch So you don't overwork a sketch that's like, let's say, not even been approved as final, right? But you do have so much detail that you want to maybe show the client without getting like too committed to it. Yes. Because you don't know if it's going to, if it's going to be the one. Um, So what do you do in that case? Like, how are you presenting these sketches? 
because I just saw I saw your artwork and I was like, this is so mm-hmm. intricate. How do you go about presenting like a raw sketch for something like that? Good question. Yeah, this is actually a pretty solid yeah you know, sketch. I would say I would say this level of finish, um, where you know I can I could toggle the uh, opacity on the background, and you could see like that initial sketch right there. That might be a good proof of concept thumbnail, but I might send out three of those uh, to the client. Wow, that t- in my eyes, that's like a lot of detail. Like yeah. I've seen yeah, some other maybe. artists who do circles it would be like a circle of a whale shark right Right. true true yeah with like some dots that say like these are stars (laughs) right right right. yeah i was gonna say actually this sketch there without the colors maybe more of what yeah i mean it kind of depends a lot of times it really depends on the client because some clients come to us with complete creative freedom Mm -hmm. and so we're pretty sure we can kind of do whatever we want um so it that point we so might... in that case maybe it's worth showing a more fleshed out yeah. sketch and we would only do one i think for a oh, lot right. of the clients now we maybe do one or two, one, two. <laughs> um because yep. we will have the rough you know four or five thumbnails but we pretty quickly put that down to you know maybe and you two have or your three. favorites too so I, you I feel like artists like... already have their favorites you know and it's they like do. you know if you give the client three thumbnails they're going to be the, the worst that, one the one that you don't like right they're gonna so... be the worst one. i agree <laughs> so you don't show them that one <laughs> do yourself a favor don't show, show them, them your don't actual show, yes. favorites don't show anything you don't want to be picked that's yeah. a, that's a good rule if they want another nails. one they'll ask for it if there's something yeah. that they don't like that they're just like mm, could true. you throw in one that has palm trees or something you're like sure and then you figure that part out you know, you know what's like, been trippy though is we've we've had a few projects recently where um we were surprised by the direction that the client wanted and we wouldn't necessarily have chosen that route and we just see we it still through. liked it yeah but it wouldn't have been like our number one right and so Got we're kind of like hmm, okay i feel like we're leaving some cool stuff on the you know some like, meat are on you the sure phone. about that okay, yeah um all but right. i think <laughs> but it comes back to you 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 right you you go with what the client wants if that's like they're very set on it and then you just lean into it with everything you've got and then in the end it would work out like something different that you wouldn't have tried and it's right. kind of that idea of like you know each project leaves you um in a different place skills wise you've learned something yes. it's I think, inevitable i think that's so true i feel like sometimes if you end up working with a client that has an amazing art director right. or a client who really gets the mission of whatever it is and and knows what you're good at and knows your strengths mm-hmm. it can really help yep. bring out the that's best true. of you in a new project yeah. even if you're having doubts about like yeah. you know the the color scheme or the direction or the concept right. but they know you can pull it off in a similar way as to how roxy you know matt can pull <laughs> off certain things yeah even if he's to- not yeah. totally sure you're helping bring out the yeah. best in him sometimes we can get clients that really can figure out how to do that and and surprise you yeah mm-hmm. no definitely it's a lovely experience when that happens i definitely feel like it's a special moment and i don't um rely on it <laughs> Yeah, it's a happy surprise, right? It's a happy surprise <laughs> yes, for sure. We yeah. Love that. No, I think that's one thing. Um, like you said, they see something in you, and then I would say, you know, don't be afraid to make it your own. Like they mm. might have some suge- some suggestions, but they chose you because they like what you do. So True. it's like they want you to maybe add something, but to do it in that way that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, so like with this recent project that he's talking about, we presented three sketches because we. Um, you know, we liked all of them, but we weren't really sure which one they would want. We, we, you know, yeah. had our favorite that they hoped they would go with because right. we thought that that was what the audience would like the most. Um, but they chose to kind of skew things a little differently. Mm-hmm. Um, at first we were like, oh, I don't know. That like might look so much more boring, whatever. Yeah. Um, but then they're like, well, that's what they want. And then we're like, oh, we're just going to like hype that that perspective up yep. a little bit because yes. it went from being like an overhead perspective to being a side perspective and right. we're like oh that's gonna flatten things so much you know like i don't know if that's gonna be as cool right it um, changed the tone of the piece it which, did. which was what was an, uh, ex- unexpected for us mm-hmm. but when it redirected the tone and we just leaned into that there's also still power in say like a profile image has a lot more of a raw like a has more punch than than a 3d like orthographic view you know or an aerial view so you just gotta find the points of um, where you can where you can punch up the the impact on whatever composition you're on. I think it and made it more happened. still. It did. This, yeah. It, cre- it created a different sound. 
right? <laughs> a visual An aura. <laughs> Why don't you, don't um, can you tell us more about this project? So the viewers who are listening about it can maybe go check it out. Is it out sure. yet or is it still under wraps? It, it is out. We actually haven't posted about it since I got sick. So you guys will be the first <laughs> ones to hear it directly from us. Breaking actually. news. Yes. Breaking it's news. It's on our Behance though. It is on our Behance. <laughs> we had it prepared on there. Do you want to jump to it? Um, so we can check it out. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. All right. Here Let's we go. Let's see if it loads. Let's see. I see it the spinning It was wheel. having a little tricky part loading. There Maybe even if go. you just go back. I know. To the little guy so there. Strange, yeah. hmm. Well, there it is. <laughs> well, okay. In the middle okay we there, get a little preview of it. In the middle there. Right. We're gonna we're just gonna give you a sneak peek with the, the small view. You if you go to if you go to Matt's Behance, you can see it in full. Yeah. Um, but it is There's actually a shark. <laughs> there is a whale shark in there. Um, oh I see it, it. I see it even in the thumb like in the preview. Yeah. So um it is the movie, or not movie, music tour poster for Jack Johnson, actually. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and so this is what you guys were working on. And, and I feel like from what you were speaking about, turned out to be an amazing collaboration mm -hmm. where you created something even better than you expected. Yep. Initially. Yeah. So amazing. Oh, I sure. love it. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. I, well, I, well, I mean, of... yeah, just... I mean, even from there, you can see. So you can see that it's a side view of the boat floating mm -hmm. on the ocean with all the fish and yeah. everything under there. Yes, and if you're so. listening right now, if you're watching the stream, Cody just dropped the link to the, oh, okay, to the tour poster <laughs> in the chat. Perfect. So go ahead and check it out. In the meantime, Yay. we'll continue working on our whale shark piece on Adobe Fresco. I actually, awesome. um, coming back to this piece now, mm -hmm. what is the next step in your process? So I, I've, I've been seeing that right. you've been sketching using the pencil. So yes. what's usually next at this stage? Bring us back to the... Sure. All back. right. Coming back into this composition, um, what I've been really enjoying doing is contouring out the... Um, using the stripes. Okay, so these whale sharks have these kind of stripe patterns that are really cool. Mm -hmm. But using those stripes also as a way to contour out the volume of these whale sharks because they have some interesting features. So for example, you look at this whale shark, it has a, a large hump um, kind of above its pectoral fins. And it's sort of a mass that kind of grows as it moves from that back fin, pectoral fin over here. And as it moves this way, it mm -hmm. kind of grows and then it sort of gently fades into this flat slipperish kind of shape of the head. So now, it's a really yes. kind of complex uh, 3D shape that I'm trying to imply using contour lines. So that's where you see I'm doing, for example, if I you can see, oh, that's a vector brush. Or no, that's not. So if I go here, if I go, um, if I were to draw a line flatly across that way, it would really flatten and conflict with this line that I have here. Right. We lose that putting, the shape of that yeah. little hump. So I want to imply the fact that the, the body slopes away here towards the gill plate, comes up, and then it hits this other mass here. And so it's another form there. And then it re returns and goes over towards the other side of the gill plate. And while this is just really loose sketches in, it probably won't end up in the final, it will help um, give me a sense of, okay, when I start putting in my dots, these dots are conceivably following these ribbons that I've created. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. It's just sort of creating slices uh, of these whale sharks. And then also compositionally, like you'll see me from time to time, I'll have one shark drawn and I'll just erase it. I erased one that was over here and added this one mm -hmm. just because I want to try to avoid too much repetition in the um, angle that these sharks are swimming. I want to have sharks swimming from all different angles. I don't want to have this shark seem to be the same as that shark, in other words. Got it. So that way yeah. you avoid kind of repetition in the pattern yeah. of the, yeah. the swim pattern, let's call yeah. it. Exactly. Um, I love seeing how you are sketching out the the overall shape the volume mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of times you see people sketch out just the outlines yeah. but you know and then just in the next stage maybe with color or whatever sketching out the volume but i think it's really cool to see you sketching out the volume here especially when you're working with 
anatomy of something else. It's not, you know, maybe I feel like human is a little bit more common or even like right. dog or cat, right? But you're working with whale shark, I feel like is a little bit different. It's a little bit out there. So I think it's <laughs> it's really cool that you're really taking the time to study that volume and get it right. Um, why do you think you are interested in having the pattern, the, the swim pattern, the way these mm -hmm. guys are swimming different? What do you think is the value that that Good brings question. to to your work? Yeah, so um, I think with every piece, um, if you're if you're not paying attention to uh, a repetition that's happening, you can you can kind of create areas where the composition feels um, heavier on one side, or it feels just a little too simplistic. Yeah, simplistic. And I I think of it almost like musically, it has like a rhythm to it. And I know it's it's a visual art form but there is a certain flow it's visual rhythm yeah to it where the, you like for example right now i'm having a problem just with the fact that this shark that i drew is like too close sidled up <laughs> sidled up against the head of this shark and i don't i don't want the the mistaken uh, idea to come across that oh that's a tiny shark and that's a large mama shark i don't necessarily mm -hmm. think that's true what i want it to seem like is it's di different depths um, which is a difficult thing to do when you're not using, say, like atmospheric perspective, where one shark is faded more than the other, which is closer. Yeah. But we're just using scale to create the sense of depth. So that's where I think the trickiness is. And I, I want to sort of nail that. Right. So I'm still struggling even with this one. It's it's maybe just too big. And I think actually the Jack Johnson is supposed to give you a little um, good yeah, practice before was... this because one of the things that we talked a lot about when I was um, coming to you about feedback and stuff mm -hmm. when we were drawing out the piece in profile is before we'd had something that was more top down like this, but when it came to the side, yeah. um, the danger was that all the shapes were in profile and looked very right. flat. Yes. And it's like little kids almost, you know how they draw everything like a perfect profile, yeah. but it was like me having to kind of pull yeah. up images like this for him, like the ones that you're sharing right. around the iPad and being like, can we turn the ray so that it's more like on mm. the side? Even if we're seeing the boat in, you know, perfect profile, right. like the fish can still be more you know, dynamic. And, and that's the thing that like was that. really interesting because um, doing things really flat has a stylistic, is a stylistic choice. It is, yeah. Can totally work. And it's interesting, like I really almost envy, I do envy the way people can design using simplicity and that's i think almost the hardest thing to do mm -hmm. is to to work in a very simple um sh very clean uh this is the way i access my imagery in my head it's very 3d and stuff like that but there's different ways to do it and and uh our style is just it really relies on um i think figure the figure being dynamic that's it's kind of that I think references your figure drawing background yeah, because there's that. such an emphasis on volume and yeah um, you know even if you do have a flat style that's not to say that it's a simplistic style I think right, that's, uh, I think that's the, the part that gets tricky like doing a flat style doesn't mean that you don't have a sense of volume or that right, kind of thing right, right? right. Um, like people who are the most talented at their flat drawings. Um, especially figurative work, right. like we said earlier, right? Like if you do the figures wrong in a weird way, it looks off, but there's plenty of people who do flat types of stylistic. illustrations that are very stylistic, mm -hmm. like elongated or, you know, very it's, curvy, but it looks atomically correct it's because it's consistent and yeah. it's true yeah. to, you know, an anatomy proportions and things it's, like that. Yeah. Um, so that goes back to like, you yeah. know, I feel like when, if, uh, when you're in art school, um, and maybe anyone in the chat, maybe they can um, confirm if 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 this if they feel this. But like, I feel like your art school professors generally, they're mm. like, you have to learn all of the intricacies, all of the difficult parts of figure drawing before yeah. you can draw a very simple contour drawing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like learning all the rules before you can break them and create oh, a stylized right. version of whatever it is you oh, want. Right. Um, exactly. But they try, your teachers you generally try to stray you from stylized mm -hmm. um, yeah. versions of things and make yeah, you and kind of draw great. true to life yeah. before you can break the rules. So. You know, yeah. it's it's hard. And I feel like that's when it comes down to your own artistic taste. Right. So like like you were saying, um, Matt, if you like to think in with volume and like right. to think about 
um, the anatomy, then you're naturally going to want to draw like this and you'll be thinking about yeah. those things. And other people maybe just have a different way of kind of doing the artistic math. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny to see how everyone problem solves. It is. No, yeah. definitely. I would be curious to hear how, how other people feel about, you know, style and, and finding style and then, you know, trying to seek seek your style like to, to actively try to like create a style it almost is more difficult like it has to just sort of come with time you know and just like repetition and then it just sort of becomes your style like when we we're in college we were, we were looking at other artists and sort of maybe there was more replication of things going on in, in college but now like once you've just sort of been out in the world and you're doing work on your own you start to develop your own nuances yeah. i mean i think that's stones. how anybody learns right yeah. anything like when you learn how to play music you're always playing the classics yeah, yeah. like that's how you learn the skill yeah and then exactly. it's like the thing right once you know the rules and you can break the rules so yes yes and i feel like uh style which is a big uh, artistic question i feel like everyone's mm -hmm. always seeking their style it just comes down to your strengths and your weaknesses right oh, so if your yeah. strengths are like you said um, detail and yeah. volume and anatomy, that's going to be your style. That's going to define your style. But if your strengths are something entirely different, just working flat, let's say, or minimalism or that, then that will be your style and, mm -hmm. as opposed to forcing it. Right. So like right. Yep. if you tried your for to force yourself to decrease the amount of detail you include in your work, yeah, that probably wouldn't be a strength to you. It'd probably be very no. difficult and just kind of silly for you to even be trying to do that. So um, if anyone in the chat, challenge. yes, it would be a challenge for you. It would be very unnatural. So if anyone in the chat has any questions for these two, mm -hmm. um, if you're just tuning in now, we're here on Adobe Live. You're watching Wooden Wave. They're an art, husband and art, husband and art, husband <laughs> and wife art duo. Um, and we're working on a piece here for the hashtag create mm -hmm. waves campaign. Um, and we're in Adobe Fresco. So if you're watching from YouTube, drop your questions in the chat. If you're watching on Behance, drop your questions in the chat. We've been talking about everything and you're watching here, Matt create this very intricate piece on whale sharks. Yeah, um, whale sharks. So cool. Oh my gosh. Yes, they are a superhero team. Someone asked. So yes, superhero <laughs> oh, team. Oh, thank agreed, you. Agreed. Agreed, everyone. Agreed. Okay. So Aww, thanks, guys. <laughs> Matt, bring me back to this drawing. What right. phase are we in? What are you looking to improve on at this point? Um, mm -hmm. just give me a little a little context here where we're at. Sure. All right. So diving back into the image. Uh, I'm almost to the point where I finished all of my my contour lines that I was talking about earlier. Um, I feel like I have enough and I'll, this is where I'll, I'll double back with Roxy and, and I actually haven't heard from you <laughs> much yet about it, but we'll live we'll critique decide. here from Roxy. Yes. <laughs> and I'll be waiting I'll be like, Oh, waiting for Give me some good emojis on this one. I feel, I feel yes. good but we'll, um, we'll probably be, um, calling it in terms of compositionally, how many sharks we have. And if there's any changes I need to make to to move one a little bit further to the right like it feels like maybe a little lacking in this corner yeah um and that could be as simple as me adding in sharks that are lower lower down i'm also considering like that was the fast shark that was the craziest fast that was, shark i've ever was, seen drawn ever <laughs> and, uh, we could cool also guy. we could also start incorporating instead of just sharks maybe like little fish little fish because these sharks are they eat cr krill and plankton but they also will eat um small fish so like a Tiny school fish. of fish and that might be a cool um added element to create movement so again this piece yes. has got a lot of movement go ahead what do you, get? What do you not, got but maybe not too many because there's See? gonna be the stars i'm getting i'm getting so carried away one thing that we thought would be kind of fun but maybe a little confusing i'm not sure yeah. is that you know, there were going to be, or there are going to be the stars that come in yeah. on top. Maybe stars. you can show that oh, yeah, for anybody our... who just joined, who is looking at this, Earth. like what stars? Yeah, the thumbnail that we're basing um, this on. All right, there so there's go. our underlying thumbnail. Yeah, so it's the concept kind of, of the stars that are in mm -hmm. the night sky on the mm -hmm. top, they kind of gradually go down and then you see that same um, kind of star pattern, but it appears on the backs of these mm -hmm. um, whale sharks and just trying to think of how the movement comes down with those 
stars yeah. we were thinking you know maybe they're white on that black background but when they right. transition into the white um of the, the, of the middle yes you know we could have some of those um dots become black on the white background and yeah. those could become krill um something like that and then I, cool. so that's why i advised them to show some of the whale sharks with their mouths open mm. if you look at the images it's actually really fun they have these <laughs> massive mouths and you see them feeding to take in these it's krill. weird though because when you look at their side profile this is what i've been tripping on is they do have massive mouths but from the side they look tiny Look at that. Yeah, they do look like little tiny, tiny mouths. Like, but like the barely. width is where they make up for it. Yeah. Jeez, you're just, so right. That is so like trippy funny. to think about. Like, yeah. And then it's like an optical the illusion. Yo, here's a good, here's a good, so I found a 3D the, there you go. Perfect. So that's it open. Yeah. Um, and then when they're, when you see them from the top down, um, they, you know, they curve their mouth slightly up to be able to scoop. So you can see the opening from a top down view and it's actually yeah. really cute. Um, so that was one of my feedback things. Like, right. let's show some of them with their mouths open because it's such a fun um, pose and it's a bit more dynamic yes. too, you know, so, so it, it gives character to them yeah. um, because you do want to have them as individuals. So they're not as pattern based, like, you know, Escher did have his patterns that intersected um where a lot of them were always the same but it's nice when there's right. some variation to make it yeah we're, more we're kind of like roxy said we are kind of um inspired a little bit by the the escher transition uh, of yes where you'll have one shape turn into another yeah that's, that's what's happening here i think the next thing that i want to start doing now that you mentioned it i think once we're good on on the sharks here i want to start playing a little bit with that back brown black and maybe punching it in a little bit. I don't think it's quite yet ready, but I do want to see where that transition where the shapes start. Yeah, exactly. Where? How am I going to figure? This is the, the fun question. Weaving it together. Yes, that's that's kind of mm -hmm. the unknown variable here. Is this area right here in the transitional zone? Like one thing I was thinking of is maybe these are shadows. Like the black tendrils are sort of operating as shadows. So what I he's referring to? Yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's you know depending on how someone's looking at it, it yeah. you know it could look like flames of some kind I don't want that, and yeah. we didn't want that right so we're thinking like no it's supposed to mimic you know the shape of yeah. the tails but i don't know if that's as evident you know maybe down. if oh, the right. if the um, to avoid it looking like a flame if you kind of incorporate the shadow of some of the fins could break right. up that flame a little bit yeah because i think yeah. that's just what's going on is like in the sketch it may look like a flame because we're not seeing fins on the there's yeah. one like kind of i can see it in the center but not on some of the other right on that that essentially yeah. like there's a little bit of a fin there and i think that really helps yes. break up the illusion of a flame mm -hmm. so, so that's, that's a tricky one problem solving. it's so tricky <laughs> i'm thinking like the other things you could do is like do we want to use a blend do we want to go in that direction or we want to keep the graphic or like i have the implication of these like tiger stripes these lines mm -hmm. which kind of interact with the, the the sharks stripe patterns and those could just become more dense as we move upward that's and true it just becomes black you know you have mm -hmm. less of those striping patterns here and they could kind of represent like the sand bottom because mm -hmm. it's it's the striations. the striations of the sand and then all of a sudden it becomes so dense that we're in a black night sky. And it all avoids There's a lot the to flames. tackle concept <laughs> conceptually here. There's a lot of decision making. I'd like to right. hear some uh, ideas from the from the group if, if possible. Yes, if wow. anyone in the chat has any ideas on ways to kind of have these whale sharks emerge from yeah. from the ocean into the sky, yeah. let us know in the chat. I'll be sure to let you know once ideas start rolling in um did you i am going to just charge my apple pencil i saw the notification five percent there we go <laughs> charge that thing up. it happens to everyone it happens to That's everyone so, quick. so right. always be um, charging yeah totally so can you tell me a little bit about so i see that you worked all in one layer for your sketch so yes. I'm wondering, what is your layering process? At what point do you decide mm -hmm, to break mm -hmm. into another layer? Adobe Fresco lets you work in unlimited layers. Oh, so I'm curious so um, what you're doing right there. there. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, because this is kind of the thumbnail sketch, uh, I, I really just need one layer for the pencils. Um, 
but what I probably will do is I'll start um, for the colors. So I could create another layer right now and I'll move that underneath, real simple. And that's when we'll dip into our I'll hit brush and that should toggle my my chunk. Chunk, Got chunk it. feature. Yay. And I'll just start adding that in. So that's, that's the simple nitty gritty to it. Now maybe I'll turn this guy down a little bit more or off. Mm -hmm. um and uh i could just start you know filling in with a uh, make sure i'm still on chunk um i've got my brush settings uh, i can maybe go a little bit smaller on the brush i can get more detail and what's great is because i have brush and then i have my um, keyboard bluetooth i'm just going to go back and forth between uh oh is it not Mm. Uh oh, technical, technical Wait, troubles. I just had to <laughs> repair it. There it is. Okay, all we're right, back on board, right, folks. Back. You know why? Because <laughs> I was, repaired the I, problem I by repaired. repairing the. Oh, that's a good one, Roxy. <laughs> so, so I'll just go ahead and and I'll be hand in hand eraser, undo, and um, and brush. So, those are the two most. I'm on the correct layer. Yes. Those are the two most used functions for me is undo. So I'll have, I rest my hand on the alt or the command key and the Z button. Plus I have my pinky going back and forth or my, my pointer finger going back and forth between E and B. And I'll just go E, let me erase that. That was too, too close. Back to B, I'm gonna re-add that in. And I don't like the way that looked, undo, 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 undo. undo. Got and that's it. how I work. Okay, okay, okay. So very natural, very, like yeah, very intuitive, right? Like you're just like so. um, really assessing every brushstroke as you go. Uh, I yeah. wanted, I wanted to ask you. So I see that here for this piece, you're working mm -hmm. in black and white. I think mm -hmm. the final you envision it in black and white, given we're talking yeah, about stars and sea. Do you generally work in black and white before you move to color, or if color is a bigger part of the piece, are you working in color at the stage? Um, tell me a little bit about how you introduce color. You want to dive in on that one? Sure. Um, yeah. So usually the sketches are in black and white or sometimes he actually, depending on the project, sometimes mm -hmm. he really likes to just sketch um, with extreme. pencil to paper in um, yeah. like a blue pencil or some I other color like pencil. Yeah, the non erase. Mm -hmm. um, um, like a draft. Photocopy blue. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Pencil. Um, do that. I think too, because sometimes he likes working in blue pencil because when he really starts to articulate the line work that will stay, then he'll go over with a darker pencil mm -hmm. or even like a pen to point some yes. things out. Um, Something nostalgic to blue pencil for me as well. It is mm -hmm. the best too. You were it's so creamy. It's such a creamy pencil. I don't know what they put <laughs> into it, but it's a soft <laughs> pencil. It feels a less bit of scary too. Fuzzy you're, magic. You're like, oh, it's just blue. It's not black, right? It's, yeah, not, it's not black. We're in between. We're thinking about it, you know? <laughs> right, right. Non-committal. Yeah. yeah you know, exactly. It is very non-committal. Non yeah. I really agree with that. It's the first draft pencil, you mm -hmm. know. It's like this isn't the final that you're sending to the editor type yeah. of thing. Um, yeah, so, you know, usually we'll draw it out and then uh, bring that into the iPad and then be able to do like the final sketch over that. Right. Um, depending on what the project is, we'll just submit those sketches as is. If we already have some strong feelings about color, we might put those in there. Mm -hmm. um, I think because our color palette is like pretty bright, colorful, um, yeah. pieces, people kind of know what to expect from us. So yeah. they expect there will Got be a lot it. of color um, because we don't usually work in black and white. That's not usually a question of how our yeah. work will come out. Yeah. Um, and then once we get approval on the sketches, then we'll just really dive into color. Um, Got it. So if this were, let's say, a color full piece as opposed to black and white, would you be mm -hmm. doing this in color as opposed to with the black? Like, would you go straight into color or are you yes. doing like black color blocking or something? Yeah, do I'll do sense? color. And then what's great about Photoshop is you can alpha lock and you can just yes, change you can. your colors. Yeah, and that's what's great. So you don't cool. feel like, oh, I've, I've wasted my time for the last, you know, oh three hours working with the wrong colors. <laughs> yeah, we'll work in, we'll, we'll start working in those colors pretty much immediately after the initial pencil sketch is approved. 
Okay, well, the first perfect. sketch is always just pencil. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to know. Surgery. Like when when it's starting to happen. Okay, interesting, interesting. I know this is an exception because we usually you guys usually work in. I said we like you know all three of us. Usually yeah, you're work. on the team now. Yes, yeah, <laughs> us on the team. We usually work in color, and this one's an exception. Um, but I loved I love to hear just like all the intricacies of what's going on, especially because you guys do have such colorful, intricate pieces. I'm like, when does this stuff start coming into play? Um, right, because <laughs> it's just I I find it fascinating, and we're getting a little live view, live glimpse at as to how these pieces come together, which is super special. Yeah. Um, I actually wanted to. Hey. read you from the chat a suggestion for Ooh. for the to avoid the flame illusion yes i'm gonna read yeah. it we're gonna read it together and and we can figure out exactly what it means i'm having a hard yeah. time envisioning it but okay. i think there's okay. something here okay here. okay so this is from alexander shout out alexander in the chat thanks for Woo. joining thanks, so alexander. um their suggestion is here we go if you imagine our pov being the projection point for a lantern light, we could have hard shadows occur as they move beyond the light source. Mm -hmm. That way you'll have a hard, that way you'll have a hard line shadow occurring and breaking up the flame mm -hmm. like shape. Instead of pointy ends, you'll mm -hmm. have horizontal waves that go atop the sharks. So I think it's something mm -hmm. with like the shadow of the waves maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, if the light is That'll break at up the bottom that. of our, of our piece yeah I could something see like that okay. so just a suggestion for you thank you alexander for awesome. for um your comment and your perspective and i mean that's great that's an awesome if you suggestion. think about it too like a lantern they're thinking about like a a, a color i mean a, a a light source like a lantern would have a soft mm -hmm. uh projection of of light not so much like a spotlight which would have a crisp crisp yes. shadow so maybe that's kind of what he's he's intoning is the idea of like it being like it could be a softer shadow and then you don't have those tendrils. Flames. Yes, right. that's true yeah. because a flame is very, sh they, it has sharp edges. So if you had yeah. a softer light, you would kind of avoid that and create right. softer shadows. So that's yeah. definitely one way to go, to approach it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have this question here from Cody Bear that I think yeah. is really, really interesting. So the question is, um, Matt, what's your favorite color palette to work in? And Roxy, what's your favorite color palette to work in? Oh. Just okay. curious if you guys Pitting have us against different each other, ones huh? or the same yeah. or what's <laughs> going on. You can I'm have differences. You can yeah. <laughs> no, no. Why don't you go first? That way I can I can see what mine is. Oh, you're you're gonna one up her. <laughs> Um, I, I'm I not know. sure if his is going to differ than mine. I think ours is going to be pretty we'll similar. See. Should we do um, it on three? Yeah, I feel like if you guys have been working together for years, you might have a similar yeah, uh, preference, yeah. but we'll see. Let's um, see. I think for me, I favor muted tones. So, um, but it's hard to say that and yeah. not um, have people picture either like pastels or like grays. Um, but what I mean is um like trying to think what do i have um Nothing. i don't know is that just like less saturation maybe less yeah saturation. less saturated but also including a touch of gray or brown in it to make it more neutralized yeah um okay. yeah so it's not um necessarily a pastel turquoise like this might actually be but something that has uh more gray or brown in it to just mm -hmm. give it a little mm -hmm. bit more indecision it classy yeah it sounds just, very you know, classy it a sounds earthy. like little yes. earth tones you know um yeah so i like you know fun colors i'm not just talking about let's say skin tones or neutrals in that sense mm -hmm. but um like i love a, a good turquoise i love you know rich greens and that kind of thing but i don't like you know the or not that i don't like them um i just don't prefer like primary colors right. or things at full saturation i it's think saturation like, was a good good that way was to a good it. way to yeah. describe it yeah. and that's what Got you're saying it. when you when you say like add a little touch of gray or a warmth to I it i pretty much add brown to everything right mm. i think i think that's pretty much the same thing for me but i like to um create the metaphor that i like my colors to have a little bit of indecision in them and okay. that you look at it and you're like that's is that's, that a blue or is it green? green is it blue mm -hmm. what what did they oh, do to create that okay like, so like like off. is it red or orange like which color right, is yeah it? is yeah. it like turmeric you know versus turmeric turmeric versus like yellow or orange so and within those colors we'd like to try to have a little bit of analogous colors kind of like i love the play of two similar analogous colors next to each other 
and then it's clump it's complementary right you know so two warm mm -hmm. turquoises a little bit stepped up in in gradient or in um in saturation, in hue, saturation or, hue. or yeah or hue and then on the other end like bring in a warm yellow that pops mm. as the stars or something like that so that okay. would be yeah that it's would like, be my like, you were, like you were saying that turmeric with the teal oh, you know yeah, turmeric and the teal is a good combo for sure sounds like a good tea the warm and the cool mm, yeah tea. that sounds like a boba place that needs to be open right? there would be a long or something or long line that that, that boba place. <laughs> yes i like it i like it I lo that does sound good a boba place that also sounds like crystals or something it kind of sounds like it yeah a little earthy yeah and, and, i think you're right I like you're another right. like fun thing like that's kind of unexpected like or is this a crystal shop crystal so shop you know but then it happens to have like boba which is awesome i think it sounds more like a, a an ice cream parlor that has all their flavors in pantone instead of like yes and it's like every flavor is awesome. like rooted in in an yeah. earthy like element it's not just vanilla yeah. it's like yeah mm, i get that i can see it guys, i can see it happening vanilla bean. do you guys have chocolate and then the guy's like mm, no, what's, just the hex? what's the hex pattern i don't i don't <laughs> what's the hex code? What's, yeah i don't know what chocolate is you gotta <laughs> i come. love it i love seeing how you guys can um bounce these color palettes off of each other i feel like uh roxy maybe you tone down some of the colors if if it's a little too crazy that's the feeling i'm getting and Matt, I feel like you add the punchiness um, in the pieces. So that's amazing. I love seeing how you guys like compliment each other. Um, so yeah, great question, <laughs> Cody. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and one question, just like while we're here in this color world, what is your favorite color? That's like for each of you. Do you have one single favorite color? Um, an intense if question. I had to pick, it would be in the teal, teal realm. Yeah like the color of our house is a muted yep. teal. Oh, okay, tones. okay, yeah, okay. House okay. Color. Yeah. We went through and a whole, met? yeah, it's a, it's pretty mm -hmm. much um, a little bit grayer maybe teal, but I think it would be like, like she mentioned our house. And we were wow. building- you looked, if you, you looked guys at are the so paint aligned. <laughs> if you looked at the paint swatch though, you would think like, that's such a gray color, right. you know? Mm -hmm. Swatches are deceiving. They, we are, yeah. they really are. Oh man, we picked one swatch and we painted our house that color and we're just like, whoa, that is way too mermaid. Like that's mermaid. That's not gonna work. And like, there's nothing wrong with mermaids. There's nothing wrong no, with mermaids. But if you it didn't would, want that, yeah. yeah. It would make an excellent color for an ice cream shop. If we ever opened there an ice go. cream shop, it would be that teal. But okay. that was not her. The metric house. was like, do we want to come home to a mermaid house, house? every night? Mm -hmm. Like Yes. No, I don't think that's what we want, but they're not the same mermaids <laughs> or, I've read. Yeah, so yeah. Or it's like, um, like we one both... of your kids picked it out or something. Yeah, yeah. Like that. we knew what we were going for and that wasn't it. So it's like, okay, let's bring it back. Like we're going to have to pick something way more grayed out. Silent. And then when you put it up there, mm. it's, you know, just looks like a nice teal. Oh, here's another metaphor that I always like to drop in, like mixing it up. So like with that color that we picked for our house, the problem we felt with that color was that it was very loud. And what we wanted was a color that listened. And it was like, when you look at a color that's very, very saturated, it's, a, it's screaming, I'm turquoise. Like, you know, yeah. that's, that's kind of pretty turquoise back there, but the color of our house is even more. And when we finally mixed down the color to what we wanted, really not like neutralized it, it became quiet. And it was like a house that you were like, oh, it's like, Calming. I can be really relaxed yes. here. It's, it's a listening color. It's a listening color. Not a color. screaming color. <laughs> I love that. Do you guys apply that kind of thinking to your pieces? Our relationship? Um, in general? Because I, I feel like you mentioned quiet and listening um, yeah. as a descriptor of another um, piece that yeah. you said you were working on. So I'm wondering if mm -hmm. you approach color from that, from like a mood-based perspective often. I think we do. Um, you know, like in this one, we were thinking, you know, should we put color in it? And we're thinking, you know, the black mm -hmm. and white has a nice stillness to it. Um, and then it lets the graphic quality, um, you know, show itself a bit more. And if anything, we would add maybe a little bit of yellow for the stars. Mm -hmm. um, in the Jack Johnson poster that we showed, it had to be a four color drop because it's a screen print. Mm -hmm. And so that was actually a really good example of right. the colors that we prefer, Oops. where it's like those muted turquoises and then that soft yellow for the moonlight. So I'm gonna pick um, a, a yellow so go like, yeah, so know. just, you know, like picking colors that emit that kind of um, 
mood, what vibe, atmosphere. Yeah, that we were trying to go for. Sorry, I was like, I was almost going to point out the, <laughs> yeah. yellow, the yellow. Oh, you were more. like, oh, that yellow's too yellow. <laughs> yeah, just gonna Speaking like, of which. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, I love that you guys are thinking about color in that way. Um, I feel like it definitely comes through in the energy that your pieces give off um, and thinking about color in that in the way of like emotions just as another element like another it makes your piece more dynamic right because you're thinking about it in all its sensory glory yes. um, which sometimes color can be an afterthought if you have a really strong like um, base drawing you know which you right. guys do have really strong technical drawing so it's like you could uh <laughs> let color go to the wind if you wanted to right but it's right. cool to think about it and at every at every piece think about exactly how you want to purposefully execute it mm -hmm. um matt tell me what you're doing here <laughs> give, give us give us a little bit more yeah. uh insight as to your process right now just as hey. a heads up we've got about 10 minutes All left right. so tell us what we're doing here cool so we are um, so we've kind of gotten to the point where the sharks are delineated enough. I think it's a good time to start incorporating some of the other assets. So we've already included our sky. We have our sky here and I'm toggling the opacity up and down just so that I can kind of go in and erase some of that black sky from areas where it's bleeding into the shark uh, anatomy. But then I also want to add in some stars just because it's, it's a, uh, Talking about color, all this color talk has gotten me feeling like, oh, gosh. That's some in there. I'm, I'm craving gonna, some I'm color. I'm kind of hungry for some <laughs> color here, yeah. Yes. And I am curious how we're going to incorporate color or if we're going to incorporate color on the whale shark itself because they do have, they they're do have like dots. A, a blue gray, don't they look like it? Or am I yeah. making They're kind of, yeah. gray, they're kind of gray. monochromatic in, in, a, yeah. in a way. They're gray and white, but we are working in a, a phantasmic kind of setting here where that's we true. could, I think we could uh, interpolate stars into dots. And that is kind of the beauty of the story behind this piece where we're referencing um, the technology that the Hubble Space Telescope has developed, uh, that scientists have created for the Hubble Space Telescope that helps scientists, astronomers identify star patterns in what, what would be an, an impossible task. The algorithm just, it picks out triangles in the stars and it's uh, able to re-identify exact stars time and time again based off of any photo. So the scientists now are, are finding that marine biologists can use the same program to identify individual whale sharks. Individual whale sharks. Um, because so, they're so cool. they are all different with their star patterns or their dot patterns. <laughs> I yeah. love the concept here. It's like scientists working there. together, right? <laughs> Astronomers <laughs> working with marine biologists to um, identify whale sharks. Yeah, I'm not sure if in your research you found out uh, what is the value of identifying the whale sharks because we're speaking. Question. This whole stream is about um, ocean conservation, so <laughs> I'm just wondering if you have a little bit on that. Yeah. If not, I, we can always look it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah I, I kind of uh enjoy talking about these sort of things in roxy too mm -hmm. um the value of knowing which uh species which individual is which in the shark population is that uh, scientists can track their movements very actually very little is known about whale sharks they're very mystical and beautiful but also hard to hard to study because they come and go, they migrate they travel massive, alone. massive distances, and then they'll come together to feed. Um, even in terms of where they breed or how they do it or how often they're making babies, like all those sort of things are important. I don't important. think they've ever seen um, they haven't a whale seen a, a, give birth. Give, a whale shark yeah. give birth. Yeah, because they've, uh, they've seen whales give birth. They've seen, they've sharks, seen give other birth. sharks give birth. They've seen sharks give birth. But not whale sharks. But not yes. whale sharks. Yeah. 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 And then lastly, this is kind of cool, is I was reading about how um, whale sharks are, they're kind of unique for this ability, and I mentioned it earlier, they have this ability to regrow a fin if if it's partially chopped off. And that's something that, you know, scientists are interested in that for regenerative yeah, purposes. Yeah, regenerative purposes, but also just on the idea of like, we talked about manatees getting hit in Florida where you're from, and scientists sort of need to be able to track individuals to see how healthy the population is, and then also see if, you know, they're 
they're recovering from certain things. Um, so it's just data. It's just science is all about data. Mm -hmm. But um, on a more personal level, I think it's just beautiful to be able to just maybe someday be able to like pull up a, an app and track where your like favorite shark whale shark is that you've ado adopted and yeah. and you know know that that they're individuals not just an icon of fear like a shark oftentimes is right it's like right yeah it gives it like this personal yeah. connection that you could possibly have yeah. with it yeah. and i think it's really cool to see that just something as quote simple as being able to track a whale shark is right. just going to be able to give you so much information about uh, a species that is a mystery um, mm -hmm. because you can like you were saying just like maybe um, one of its fins was cut off and you can see yeah. how long it takes to grow exactly or if it yeah. does or doesn't yeah I think that's so neat. And I, I, once again, I'm going to repeat this. I think it's really cool that astronomers can kind of like pass this off to marine biologists. Yeah. Right? I also wonder <laughs> like how that happened. If there was like an astrolog astronomer yeah. who was like, let me look at whale shark. Like, I wonder how it came to be that they <laughs> noticed. Other thing has dots. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, oh, what other things has dots that we can scan with this uh, crazy technology yeah, and, yeah. and see if it works? <laughs> you know, um, yeah. I bet that there's, <laughs> I bet that there's like flowers or something. You could, you know, like I'm just oh, trying to think. Um, so yeah. I think it's really interesting, and I'm amazed that um, you're able to kind of distill all of that into one piece of work here. Uh, I think that's really cool. You can definitely see all of that inspiration coming through in this whale shark, intricate whale shark um, drawing, I'm calling yeah. it, that you're putting yeah. together. Digital painting could be said mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so this is super exciting. Um, I am mystified. Um, can you tell us right now what you're doing to this shark? Okay. Uh, for those who maybe didn't catch it earlier. Yeah, I'd love to talk about it. So I am diving into this shark and I am contouring out the um, really interesting kind of hump that they have on their back. I don't know how else to describe it. If maybe yes. it'll, let's go to another reference image here. Yes. So we dive in on this reference image and I wish I had the touch controls so you could see me um, kind of highlighting that pectoral mass that moves from the tail, the back tail, all the way up to kind of like the forehead like of the shark. Like a the gills yeah. or something? I, yes, exactly, up above the gills. And it's almost like, I think of it as almost the musculature. It's like a ridge. Yes. Wide ridge. And then if you look, they have these beautiful like channels. Look at that one. So- yeah. Yes, those ridges, they look so right. nice. And they're built for, they're not like, they're not, when you think of a shark, these aren't fast and swimming frantically they're very slow they move like whales in that way they're just like mm, just cruising along and they're so large and they're really efficient and so like some of the largest animals all the largest animals on earth are whales and, and sharks and they're large because they just have to like efficiently get a lot of food and so they're efficient with their energy by just swimming slow and they got these large side fins that that operate as like wings I don't know, I could just nerd out on it. Lovely, like, majestic animals that dynamics. you've been able to yeah. highlight throughout this stream. Now, I know that we'll be back here tomorrow yes. um, to finish this piece. So can mm -hmm. you tell me what we can expect in terms of like what All you right. think we'll be covering tomorrow? There's the, the la like a minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think in a really quick summation tomorrow, what we'll try and do is um, really fine tune uh how the sky is gonna like the contrast and, and the ability of the sharks to not seem like they're losing their lines like right, right. now they are because the opacity mm -hmm. and that's going to come down to if we go back to our original thumbnail um which was here it's yes. gonna it's gonna just have like more contrast and I don't know. We'll see. You'll have to, <laughs> you're going to have to problem have solve to that part. Yeah. So I you love it. Line. I feel like you guys have shared so much with us here today. Matt, at watching you draw and just like yeah. discover and dissect the anatomy here of the whale shark composition that we've seen you play with. Um, just even the dynamics and making sure that there's movement in this piece. Yeah. You've shown us so much of your process before we even get to like the other half, right? Because we got to mostly really 
develop and fine tune a sketch. And right. tomorrow we're going to see it all come together. So you've shared so much about your process and Roxy, you have shared so much with us about how you guys work together. We found out so much about just everything that comes with being an artistic duo. So you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing with us. You're it's welcome. been so, 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 so cool. <laughs> and I can't wait to do this all again tomorrow. Now, remember friends, we'll be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific for part two with Wooden Wave in honor of the Adobe Creative Waves campaign. Mm -hmm. Now, stick around for the Premiere Pro Creative Challenge with Wojtek Plitcha. Stay tuned for that, don't go anywhere. And remember, uh, join us tomorrow morning here on Adobe Live for two special streams in partnership with San Francisco Design Week, so don't miss that. But other than that, thank you, everyone. Thank you guys for joining the stream, for showing us your process. And we'll be here tomorrow, same time, same place, everyone. I'll see you then. Bye-bye, guys. Thank Bye. you.